Okay, we're back live. This is SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org, your chief research big data guy. And Rob Solomon, Scholar Program. Groupon, now a venture partner at Excel, announced, I guess hit the news today, it was all over the buzz. Um, SVP at Yahoo in your day, you've been an investor in the past. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you, excited to be here. So, um, Actually, being a venture partner is kind of like you get brought into the club, right? The, 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 the club of VCs, and uh, you know, Excel's a great firm, great reputation, great platform. tier one. Um, obviously, Facebook was the IPO that just pretty much saved Silicon Valley. I mean, that's, those are my words. Uh, really, a lucrative and catapulted, you know, and put them on the map again in the consumer space. But here we're at the enterprise space. So, you worked at Yahoo. I saw Amar Abadala out there. You have a lot of experience on the consumer side, so. Yeah. I want to get your take on the consumer. You know, some say it's a bubble, some, the enterprise is the hottest area on the planet, and we're here for that event. Just what's your take on this consumerization trend in general? Sure, so um, there's been a lot of talk about consumer being a dead space, but if you think about it, there's billions of people using Google and Facebook and Twitter, and there's a whole host of new companies that are coming, and we haven't heard of them yet, and they'll be bigger or as big as some of those companies. Um, the other thing that's interesting is a lot of the enterprise software um, is very similar to consumer software in, in the way that people use it. So there's this consumerization trend going on, which is really important if you think about making software easier and easier to use, more people can use it, and that's good for enterprise. And this consumerization trend is not going away. No way. Can you share some insight on in what you've learned? Obviously Groupon was a high flyer, and uh, Yahoo essentially were, you know, did a lot of things that to build their own bare metal do their own big data. They actually invented Hadoop with Doug Cutting and created right. that whole big data movement, which is now obviously out there. What is some of the practices that you're seeing that successful entrepreneurs are doing with tech? Sure, so, so in terms of product development, um, in the old days we used to rely upon our gut to make products, um, and there's some of that still, but if you look at all the data and information you can get when you're building products, it's pretty amazing, and, and that's informing a lot of productization um, and product making decisions. So big data has been around forever. If you think about Yahoo and, and Google, um, part of the DNA of those companies. So big data is a really big buzz term now, but we had a, a group at Yahoo called Data um, Insights and, and Data Mining back in 1999. So data's been around forever, and it's important to how products get built. Jeff, what you, what's your take on uh, the big data movement with these consumer companies? What's your angle on it? Well, it's interesting you mentioned how kind of consumer, the, the consumerization of IT. So, um, so for me, you know, I try to look at the different ways. So you, you're always trying to, what you're trying to do is really is monetize data in the, in the enterprise. Um, so for me, the, 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 the business value, the proposition is a little bit easier to understand in the enterprise. What's the, what in your mind, what's the distinction? What are the, what are the how do you measure success from a big data perspective in terms of a consumer Sure. approach versus a, an enterprise approach. Yeah, so, so I think one of the big things um, on the consumer side is A-B testing. You, you can really quickly and easily put one piece of uh, software against another and figure out which is optimal for achieving your, your goals and your results. That's a form of, of big data. Um, if you look at how Google monetizes, um, they use data to figure out how to get their ads more and more and more relevant. Um, so it is probably the most important thing at Google is, is you know, relevance and, and they're using data to mm -hmm. make things more relevant. So that's you know, part and parcel of their entire business. So I don't even know that you can separate the two things. Right. Talk about the VC world again, because obviously now you're coming back into the fold. So talk about the announcement. You said it was out there for a while. Why is, was it officially announced today or someone right. broke in the story? What happened? No, no, we, um, we, I, I joined Excel about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, and we decided to announce it today in, in conjunction with our new marketing and PR partner, Stephanie Ichinosi, joined, joining the company. Um, so, so what do you think about the VCs? Obviously, you know, with the angel market exploding with like micro angels or super angels, what they're calling them these days. Uh, I don't know what, they, what they're calling them. You got the Y Combinator out there, you got AngelList. Um, you know, you have a whole disruption and VC firms seem to be vertically integrating. Is that because entrepreneurs need to scale up faster? Is it just a trend of the bubble? Is it, what do you take on that? I, I think it's evolution. Um, Obviously, it's cheaper. It's become cheaper and cheaper to start companies, so it makes it easy for more angels to exist. Um, a lot of young company founders need coaching, so a, a thing like Y Combinator is fantastic to help these entrepreneurs along. Um, platforms like Excel have a global approach, um, and they can go from seed, early stage, all the way up through growth, and look at different sectors. So, so it's an exciting time. Um, you know, things have changed. It's not like the old clubby environment that existed 
20, 20 years ago. It's more transparent now. Much more transparent. Um, you know, entrepreneurs speak their mind. You know who um, entrepreneurs love, and, and sometimes you know who they don't love. So it's important. Um, <laughs> and you have to, Twitter to, out there to yeah, always yeah. equalize everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Great equalizer, all this data. So um, scale out open source is a theme that we've been talking about for a long time, but now you're seeing it hit mainstream. And, you know, I remember talking to Mike and, and Amar at Cloudera and among other entrepreneurs early on, like four years ago, this whole notion of commodity hardware open source is going to be a real revolution. It is. Um, you've been involved in large scale operations. Those entrepreneurs that kind of hit that tipping point, get a product out there. We had the guys from Australia on earlier, Excel funded, you know, sub bootstrapped it up and ramped up sales, no sales force. A lot of these entrepreneurs are going to hit that lightning strike or hit that oil or what do you want to call it, and then faced with scale. What do you? What's your philosophy and advice to those guys when they they realize, wow, I just bootstrapped this up, I yep. put it up on AWS, oh my god, I got lightning in a bottle, I need to scale. What's your general philosophy and advice there? Uh, hold on tight and, and, and don't let go. No, I, I think the don't most screw up. <laughs> don't, don't screw it up. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I think what's important is. Um, <clears throat> You always have to build a great product. If you can't build a great product, you'll you'll lose that audience. Um, <clears throat> so it's important to ride the strips, slip streams properly. So when the iPhone came out, there were a bunch of mobile game companies that were, were developed. Um, you know, they couldn't have flourished before that because the platform didn't exist. Um, so when you get that opportunity to scale up, you know, make sure you have the right resources, the right product strategy. Um, and, and you take advantage of that time in, in space. It's very hard to find those moments when you can scale up a, a company quicker than, than we've ever seen in the past. Um, so don't screw it up. What's your take on mobile? Obviously, we're yeah. going to try to get Rich Wong on, some of the guys here at Excel who invest in mobile. In the enterprise, it's a little bit obvious, complex, consumerization of IT. But, yeah. but in general, building an app for a mobile phone just seems to be like the old days of prepackaged software where you know, the companies that are successful build it right out of the box right. 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 Not a lot of iteration. People aren't downloading as much. Unlike the web, it's pretty agile. You know, you're constantly pushing updates. So there's been kind of a debate in the community around. You know, agile works great on the web. Yeah. Publish, publish, publish. Iterate, iterate, iterate. But not so much for mobile. Do you have an opinion on that? Do you agree? Disagree? No, I, I think I agree. I think the reality is, um, you ha have to make a product so simple and, and graceful and elegant that people will, will use it. If you put too much into it, it just won't work on, on that little screen. So, so developing in a native format and getting it right is critical. Um, in the old days, with, with CD-ROMs and, and package software, you had the ability to patch things up and, and you know, it was kind of expected. Nowadays, it better work like television where you turn it on and it, it automatic, automatically just works and does what it's supposed to. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on the QA, that's for sure. Absolutely. And simplicity, I mean, I think that's one theme that we've been hearing, Jeff, mm -hmm. on these mobile apps. Don't overbuild, be simple. Yeah, be simple and, and use data to inform your development process. Um, yeah. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. When you're looking at, when you're evaluating a potential uh, company you might want to invest in, what are the things you're looking for in terms of how they use data to inform their either product development or yep. the way they're growing their company? Um, you know, big data is, there's certainly big data applications out there, right. and that's an important sp space in and of itself, but even for those applications or those companies, startups that are not focused on the big data space, I would imagine it's still important that they're using data to validate all the things that they're doing. Um, I'm just curious, what do you look for in a, in a company that you're, you're potentially going to yeah. invest in, in terms of how they use and look at data? Yeah, so, so the more analytical um, the product team and the development team, the better. And if they can truly leverage data to build better products or understand the markets more deeply, you know, those are special entrepreneurs. They're few and far between, and you know, the, the deeper understanding they have with being able to understand the data and to find signal in all that noise, um, the better they can deploy product, the better they can understand markets, the better they can build their business. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's um, critical. It's hard to find those, those folks, because nowadays, you know, almost anyone can create a company. Um, it's it's fairly easy, but those with deep insights and and deep understanding of how to leverage data mm -hmm. will tend to have a, stand a better chance of being successful. Do those do you, do you tend to see um, kind of serial entrepreneurs who maybe have done this before tend to be the ones that understand that a little bit better, or are there some characteristics you're seeing um, in the ones that are successful in leveraging data? I, I think it I think it runs the gamut of brand new 23 year old kid who's never done it before, who's just super smart and deeply analytical mm -hmm. to seasoned entrepreneurs who are old, like me, 45, and um, 
have been through it a few times and understand how important the data is. So I, I, I think data is the great equalizer. It, you don't have to be a seasoned entrepreneur to leverage it and understand it. You just have to be smart and, and understand the power of it. That's a great point. I'm, I'm so going to use that quote. Data is the great equalizer for yeah, entrepreneurs out yeah, there. Yeah, and us 40 something, I'm 47, so you know, we know. We've been around the me. block, <laughs> been around the track a few times, as you said, uh, got scar tissue to prove it, um, as Bud Colligan would always say. Um, but I want to ask you about kind of what you want to do at Excel. Obviously, you know, it's a life decision. A lot of people come in as venture partners because they're seasoned executives like yourself, and they're in between a spot where they want to be, not sure they want to be a career VC. Do you want to be a career VC? Or is this where you want to just, you know, roll your sleeves up and get active again? What's your motivation? Is there, can you share? Yeah, the, the main motivation is, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate to work at some great companies like Yahoo and Sidestep Kayak and Groupon and learned a lot in, in each of those situations and I'm looking forward to rolling up the sleeves, getting the hands dirty and helping young companies grow into those next generation of special companies. Um, I love doing board work so excited by that and most importantly I'm excited to find new things. Um, I know it's really hard now, it's, it's more competitive than it's ever been but you know, all three of those things excite me a lot about this role. And uh, any reactions to all the press? You uh, good, bad, ugly, what do you think about the overall press feedback. Oh, God. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't had it, just looked at the web. I did see some headlines. Um, okay. You know, Excel's a great firm, global platform. Anytime Excel does something, there's going to be a lot of press around it. So I was, yeah. you know, fortunate to be part of the team. Well, congratulations Thank on you. your new role, and uh, entrepreneurs going to really be satisfied, and you got a lot of experience, and, you know, a lot of the young guys need mentoring, and they need it fast. I sure so, hope so. <laughs> so thanks for coming to theCUBE. This is uh, Rob Solomon inside theCUBE here at the Stanford Excel Symposium. Exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.